Hello guys, welcome to H2O, the A to Z of chemistry. I am Dr. Ratu Johar, your educator for this course. Hello, atomic structure. Today we will begin with lecture 20 from the course, but make sure you have watched the previous ones before doing this one. Now, in the previous few lectures, we have been discussing about the Bohr's atomic model, wherein we learned about its limitations as well. And one of the major limitations of Bohr's theory was that he could not explain the fine lines of the hydrogen spectrum. And there were various scientists working and proposing theories to attempt the overcoming of these limitations. And one of the scientists who tried to explain the fine lines of hydrogen spectrum was Arnold Sommerfeld. So today in this lecture, we would be studying about the Sommerfeld model of an atom, which is essentially considered to be an extension of Bohr's atomic theory in order to explain the fine lines of hydrogen spectrum. So Sommerfeld, he tried to explain the formation of the fine lines of hydrogen spectrum by proposing that the orbits of the electrons around the nucleus, they are elliptical rather than being circular. So Bohr has said that the electron moves in fixed circular orbits around the nucleus, but Sommerfeld said no, these orbits, they are not circular, but they are elliptical. And when an electron is revolving around the nucleus, this is so influenced by the nuclear charge that it is set into motion in elliptical orbits rather than circular orbits with the nucleus situated at one of the foci. Not understood? Let me explain you one by one. So first of all, the electron, he said, that is revolving around the nucleus, right? So we know from the Bohr model also that the electron is revolving around the nucleus. And while it is revolving around the nucleus, the electron is negatively charged, the nucleus is positively charged. So the like charges, they repel each other, the unlike charges, they attract each other. So being unlike charges, the electron is being attracted towards the nucleus. And this is so influenced by the nuclear charge that rather than following a circular path, it sets into motion into elliptical orbits. Okay, so let us understand first of all, what is an ellipse or what is an elliptical orbit? Well, an ellipse, if we see, this is like actually a circle which we have stretched at the ends. Don't you feel this? That this is a circle which we have just stretched. So we have an ellipse. And as the diameter of the circle gives us the measure of a circle, the ellipse is measured by its two axes. The major axis, which we have labeled as AB, and the minor axis, which we have labeled as CD. So AB, the major axis, this gives us the longest distance in the ellipse. Whereas the minor axis CD is giving us the shortest distance in this ellipse okay so major axis longest distance minor axis the shortest distance in this ellipse now the nucleus he said is situated at one of the foci of the ellipse so what do we mean by this best let us understand well you can assume this ellipse actually to be a part of two circles right so one circle and another circle and they have been joined to each other and forming a shape which we call as an ellipse so this ellipse actually this mathematically it is defined by two foci the two centers of this shape and the nucleus is situated at one of the two foci Okay, so the two centers which you can assume over here, the nucleus is going to present at either one of the two positions of the ellipse. And these two foci, they are present on the major axis. The position of these foci, this is on the major axis. And now when the nucleus is present on either of the two foci, let us assume that this is one of the foci of this ellipse. So the nucleus is placed over here. And how are we going to describe the position of the electron? Well, we can describe the position of this electron with respect to the nucleus in two ways. First is this linear distance between the electron and the nucleus right and the second is given by this theta angle what is this angle this is the angle between 
the line joining the electron and the nucleus and the major axis right so this is the angle and this angular position of the electron this is actually providing the electron the necessary angular momentum now the angular momentum of the revolving electron this is quantized this was said by sommerfeld also as i told you that the sommerfeld model this is an extension of the bohr model bohr said that the angular momentum is quantized and it has values multiples of h over 2 pi similarly sommerfeld also said that the angular momentum this is quantized having values multiple of h over 2 pi now he said that the value of the angular momentum mvr this is equal to k into h over 2 pi now what is this k well k is an integer which is not equal to 0 and this is known as the azimuthal quantum number what are quantum numbers we will be discussing very shortly in this course but for now you can just remember that k is an integer not equal to 0 and this is known as the azimuthal quantum number okay and also he gave a relationship between n and k now what is n n is the principal quantum number and this you know as the number of the bohr orbits right so the bohr orbits we have been denoting by the symbol n n can be 1 2 3 4 and so on right now uh, sommerfeld he gave a relationship between n and k the ratio of n is to k is equal to the ratio of length of the major axis to the length of the minor axis of the ellipse and now when n is equal to k what is going to happen when n equal to k this means this is going to be 1 so this means that the length of the major axis is going to be the length of the minor axis and when both these lengths are equal what does this mean that this is not an ellipse this is circle right so when n is equal to k the orbit is circular just like in the bohr's model but not always this k is going to be equal to n the values of k they can vary such that k can have values equal to n n minus 1 n minus 2 till 1 right so for example if the value of n is 4 the values of k will be 4 3 2 and 1 right and how many values have they become 4 3 2 1 is four values for n equal to 4 4 values of k this means the number of possible values of k this is equal to the value of n right now let me tell you something further with a diagram so if you see over here we have a diagram where we are depicting the sommerfeld's elliptical electron orbits for n equal to 4 when n is 4 k is 4 we have a circular orbit which we have designated as 4f what does this f mean d p s what do these mean we will be studying when we study about the quantum numbers just now you just remember this how we are just making the orbits okay so when n is 4 k is 4 the orbit is circular when n is 4 k is 3 what has happened that the minor axis has reduced in length when this reduces the circle becomes an ellipse so this is how this green circle you can see this is an ellipse fine when n is 4 k is 2 we have a more elliptical orbit which is 4p and then when n is 4 and k is 1 the ellipse has become more elliptical tickle right and this we are designating as 4s so what has happened over here is that with the decreasing value of k the ellipticity of the orbit has increased right i hope you can appreciate this from this diagram fine now what happens when k is 0 
we are saying that k cannot be zero but if it is zero then what if it is zero that means this cd is zero right if cd is zero then this ellipse is not going to exist what is going to happen is just this ab line right this shrinking line a cd this shrink this shrink and ultimately when cd is zero we have just one straight line ab so what will happen is that the electron is going to pass through the nucleus but this is not going to happen right so that is why we say that k is not equal to 0 right so k equal to 0 means the length of the minor axis is 0 and the electron this should pass through the nucleus this is not happening so we say that k is not 0 now the Sommerfeld model this was basically to explain the fine lines of the hydrogen spectrum and when studies were done later and experimental uh, ex experimental evidence also shows that k value can be zero right so when k value can be zero then what will happen well the bohr sommerfeld model this was modified and another uh, designation to the azimuthal quantum number was given where l was k minus 1 what does this mean is that the values of l the new azimuthal quantum number they are going to range from 0 to n minus 1 right so 0 if it is possible and we have the number of values of L also to be the same as the values number of N. If N is 4, the possible number of values of L will also be 4. Okay, 4 N, 4 L values. And if the everything has to be okay, then the possible number that should be N minus 1. So that Z for N4, we have 0, 1, 2, and 3, 4 values, right? So what is the relationship between L and K, the old azimuthal number as proposed by Sommerfeld? This is L equal to K minus 1. Now, to explain the fine lines of the spectrum, he said that the energy of the electron depends not only on N but also on L. So the total energy of the electron, this is going to be dependent upon N plus L values. And the L values, they are not differing much in energy. Okay, the n values that differ a lot in energy as you have seen while we were calculating the energy of electron in each orbit, but the L values, the energies are not much different. And from here, Sommerfeld gave the concept of subshells or suborbits. We have orbits, and in an orbit, they are suborbits, or you can say as subshells. Fine. And now when n is 1, the possible number of values are going to be what? 1 because L number of values is going to be 1. So we have L values to be 1. And what will be that value of L? That is going to be n minus 1. So we have L to be 0 for the first orbit only one line. This means that the first orbit has only one subshell right when n is 2 the two possible values of l are going to be 0 and 1 and we have two subshells in the n orbit similarly for n3 we will be having three subshells l0 l1 and l2 and when an electron is making a transition from n3 to n2 according to bohr there is going to be just one line from n3 to n2 but now having understood the Sommerfeld model where the energy is dependent upon the L wall, uh, value also, we see that there are six lines for a transition from N3 to N2, right? How is it so? If you see the line, this line coming from N3 to N2 but level L2 to L1, right? Then L1 to L1 and L0 to L1. Similarly, when the transition is to L0 of N2, 
again l2 to l0 l1 to l0 l0 to l0 so we have instead of one line of the bohr we have six lines seen in the fine spectrum of hydrogen okay so this is how sommerfeld explained the fine lines of hydrogen spectrum by saying that the transition of electron from say n3 to n2 this will involve more than one energy value depending upon the various possible values of l in the two states and this leads to the occurrence of group of fine lines observed in the hydrogen atom spectrum and it was seen that the frequencies of these fine lines were in agreement with the values calculated from the bohr sommerfeld theory so i hope you have understood the sommerfeld model from which we have come to know that within each energy level each orbit there are sub orbits or sub energy levels or sub shells fine so that would be all for this lecture i hope you had an interesting journey into the sommerfeld model so if you have liked the lecture please do click on the like link do subscribe to our channel h2o and also click on the bell icon to get a notification as and when we put up a new lecture for you a new course for you any doubts you can mail us at h2o chemistry at gmail.com so now we will meet again for the next lecture on the quantum mechanical model of atom bye for now have a nice day enjoy yourself god bless you